So uh, thank you very much for joining at such a short notice, uh, just in 24 hours, uh, because I, I neglected uh, sending out the invites sooner. Uh, but uh, I, I'm keen and excited to uh, give you an update. Uh, after some time, we haven't uh, had these uh, uh, meetups uh, uh, on, uh, online uh, as Network Society ambassadors about the next uh, phase of uh, our project. Uh, in the past few years, uh, it became evident that not only our fundamental thesis uh, is being played out technologically all uh, over the world, but that uh, blockchain technologies are becoming the foundational infrastructure uh, for a, a new kind of decentralized uh, uh, suite of applications and uh, a new type of decentralized financing mechanism for projects that are aiming to change the world, uh, just like ours. Uh, initial coin offerings, uh, ICOs, based on cryptographic uh, digital tokens uh, have raised more than $4 billion uh, of uh, uh, money um, worldwide uh, in 2017. And uh, the first few months uh, are an indication that not only this trend is going to continue, but is going to strengthen and accelerate um, in 2018. Uh, the reason I am excited about uh, uh, the technology of uh, digital cryptographic tokens and, and ICOs is because uh, they make things that were unmeasurable before measurable. And as a consequence, uh, since each of these um, transactions uh, not only transfers data and accumulates knowledge, but also intimately represents value and transacts value, these new kinds of measurements create markets that did not exist before. And economy is an open-ended system. It is not a closed system. That is why robots are not going to take our jobs and AI is not going to displace uh, humans. We are going to thrive together. And the Network Society token that I am going to announce um, next week at Blockchain Unbound in Puerto Rico uh, is the fuel of a, an engine of knowledge and, and learning that uh, we will build in the Nets app uh, that is going to spread around the world, thanks to you as well, uh, to empower and emancipate people, um, to design their own lives without the constraints and the shackles of the local exclusive um, relationships themselves in, without having made the choice, because they couldn't, of where they were born. Um, the traditional assumption that your uh, physical location, uh, uh, or even more dramatically for many, your citizenship should um, predominantly define your outlook and your aspirations must be and can be falsified by the new tools that we are going to provide to millions of people to thrive on. In the um, goals of uh, the NETS app and the Network Society token, NST, uh, are going to be facilitated by uh, uh, the functionality uh, of the app of representing a gateway and an onboarding mechanism as people learn and teach about the opportunities of the technologies enabling the Network Society of partner projects, whether it is the Sun Exchange for solar energy or Wealth Migrate for investing globally in commercial real estate or Shivam uh, for owning your genetic data 
uh, or many, many, many others that uh, we are going to uh, partner with, or we have already partnered with, uh, these uh, pieces of knowledge are going to be actionable. It is not abstract, it is very concrete. Concrete both in the sense that the app people are going to be able to realize that just because your roof is turned the wrong direction or that you are in a continent uh, uh, or a latitude where the sun is not shining strong enough um, most of the year, that doesn't mean that you cannot leverage sun, sun, uh, solar energy. Uh, blockchain technology bridges not only people, uh, empowering them to associate freely and to transact without uh, uh, barriers, but it actually bridges technologies, platforms, um, not only in the digital, but in the physical realm as well. Because if you install solar panels in Africa and then you stream the money that the solar panel yields, in Norway, offsetting your energy bill there, it makes exactly the same, uh, it, 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 it has the, exactly the same consequence as if you could install that panel on your roof in Norway. And this is obviously just one example out of dozens and dozens that we will incorporate in the Nets app as we partner with more and more projects. Now, since we are talking about tokens, it will be very natural for the NetSap to be also a wallet and an exchange, for tokens to be held and transacted, uh, people buying and selling products and services, but also uh, voting with the ownership of the tokens because Every action on the blockchain immediately re reflects the opinions crowdsourced around the world of people who believe uh, in the outcomes that they see, the performance of teams, the crowdsourced opinion of markets. The ICO process itself is many months long. And we will not hurry it uh, uh, uselessly. Uh, the field is developing uh, very rapidly, both technologically as well as uh, in terms of uh, the regulatory stance of various jurisdictions. And uh, we will progressively uh, document our decisions around how to best architect uh, this important development phase of the Network Society project. We will establish uh, a foundation for minting the tokens based in Malta, and we will incorporate uh, Network Society operations to contract with the foundation to implement the uh, app and to uh, execute uh, the uh, functions that are needed in order to spread it in terms of marketing, support it for all the participants to have a high level of experience uh, through it. Um, an important uh, function of the Network Society token that uh, I also want to mention is going to be around not technologies that exist today, but technologies that you want to see in the world of tomorrow. Through the Nets app, you will be able to vouch and verify parameters around projects that impact your community or the world at large. And with more people pooling their wisdom uh, the projects will see a threshold crossed after which they will receive funding, both in terms of NST, Network Society tokens, and also in terms of support from Network Society ventures or other funding sources that will accelerate their development because all of the participants in the Network Society want that to happen. So... Uh, this is, in a nutshell, what uh, uh, we want to do, and it is, uh, for me, very exciting to 
be not only communicating this to you, but to welcome your feedback, your questions, and your participation uh, in uh, this new phase of, uh, of network society. Is it the time for question? Yes. <laughs> so um, mine is a learning experience. I've been learning so much thanks to you, David. So I could say basically I changed uh, not only my mind, but my worldview and my attitude towards technology and also work and profession. So this is already, you know, a, a big win to me. It's it's a lot of value. Um, and 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 imagine, uh, let's say, six months from now to be optimistic, or a year from now to be pessimistic. As you do the same, you will be earning network society tokens while doing so. Isn't that even incredible? Actually, it is. I was, I was dreaming about it. Uh, the, the the odd questions that you I would like to address to you. Maybe you know we can uh, talk about them in the, in the future uh, weeks or days. It's about having a more structured uh, vision of the project, understanding if there are you know specific uh, outcomes of, or or objectives, uh, what kind of um, influence and implication we're going to have on our personal lives and our way of working and living together. And if there is a plan about uh, searching for specific, you know, people, actors, collaborators, and uh, uh, the other thing is trying to understand together if you are only designing a system waiting to see what is the emergent features or if you have in mind some scenarios. They might be, you know, wanted, desirable, or, or maybe unwanted. And this could be interesting, even, you know, by making a little bit of, you know, stories, telling us stories about what could happen. It would be nice. That's my desire right now. Wonderful. And, and thank you for that question. So uh, you asked uh, a, a different relevant uh, uh, things, and uh, I want to address uh, them. I, I would say three. Uh, not in exactly the order that you ask them. Uh, one is, um, what are our needs in terms of people, skills, uh, uh, so that uh, the more abstract description that I gave can beca become uh, a decentralized app that people can actually use and uh, uh, they find valuable in order to invest their time. Uh, now, that is exactly the reason I appointed Mundon, my friend, whom I have known for uh, over 30 years, uh, as the uh, chief operating officer uh, for uh, this phase of uh, network society. Uh, Michel has uh, had fundamental roles uh, both in startups uh, as well as being responsible for over a quarter billion dollars of top-line revenue in organizations. So he has a very broad experience in riding a rocket that uh, uh, accelerates uh, fast and being able to manage organizations that uh, uh, strain under, under this kind of uh, speed and, and growth. Uh, and um, uh, concretely, uh, we are uh, in the process of... Uh, uh, designing um, uh, pieces of uh, the next steps as well as uh, listing the kinds of skills and, and, and um, uh, human resources that, that are going to be needed. Um, now, I, I will answer your other two questions and then I will ask uh, Michelle to say a few words uh, in response to uh, what, uh, what I just said. Um, the uh, second um, question that, that you asked is, is how are we going to, to use concretely um, uh, the Nets app uh, in, in, in our lives? And uh, there will be many different ways, uh, also because we want to build it for the future, not for the past. So um, it is very likely that there will be no website uh, for the nation. You know, there will be a website for the project, the token and everything and a team and people will be able to interact with us. In order to onboard uh, on 
the NATSAP. And in order to then uh, that become a path uh, towards the others, that will be all mobile based. Not only that, but sooner rather than later, we will also have conversational interfaces, chatbots, natural language interaction, all kinds of um, components that are emerging rapidly uh, for the next years of uh, human machine uh, interaction that is scalable and extremely smart and easy to use. The third question that you asked is uh, beyond the scope really of today's conversation. And it is how all of this is going to transform your life and, and our lives uh, all together. I do believe that this transformation is going to be pretty fundamental. Uh, I hope that it is going to be as exciting, exhilarating, but also empowering and emancipating as I feel it can be. And that this uh, feeling will turn into concrete understanding by as many people as possible. Uh, as I am addressing um, at conferences diver different audiences, uh, universities, um, um, conferences, uh, corporate uh, meetings, uh, boardrooms, uh, and, and so on, I realized that the most important barrier uh, towards full opportunities is uh, overcoming uh, the feeling of fear that too many people have. And liberating them from that fear is going to be part of my mission in promoting uh, the Network Society um, uh, application. Uh, and part of, part of our message, uh, it is a message of liberating and it is a message of, of empowerment. Uh, so that is uh, the answer of your, your three questions as I identified them. And, and Michelle, would you like uh, going back to the first question, uh, uh, address uh, uh, your role and 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 uh, the ambassadors on this call as well? Absolutely, thank you. You you can hear me okay, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, a couple of things I want to say. Just listening to David speak now, looking at some of my notes, when when. Uh, when you were just asking, uh, Massimo, you were just asking, well, what are the concrete steps? Where is the product going? And, and how can we contribute? If you would have asked me that question 30 days ago, that was the 8th of February in Bergamo, just four weeks ago, this was like a universe away. So in just four weeks, five weeks, this project has moved so quickly and has taken on so much shape, my head is spinning in the morning when I wake up because there's so many things that just happen while I go to sleep for eight hours and I see David has spinned, you know, five, six more plates. It's, it's moving very, very quickly. So the way David described the Nets app application or even uh, the Network Society ecosystem that's going to be around this this token it's rapidly rapidly changing it's changing very very fast it's already a hundred percent much more concrete than it was just a few weeks ago so if if anybody now my neighbor my my postman anybody i uh, encounter asks me so what is this thing what what is this uh nets app going to be so the fact that David just said, you know, Massimo, you say, wow, I can learn all these things and, and it really is changing my thinking. Well, just imagine if you can say, guess what? With this application, you will actually be earning. You'll be earning value in terms of tokens or other resources by learning, but also by teaching, you also by, by uh, vetting and vouching, and there are many different things you'll be able to do with this application. And of course, also in a more traditional sense, you'll be able to use it to transact, you know, to buy or sell products and services. And, and voting, I know in, uh, you're in Rome, Massimo, right now, and 
and I've been following the following, reading some articles about the voting you just went through. Just imagine, I mean, like here in the U.S. where I live, voting is such a crappy situation, and having technology where somebody then could actually use a device, maybe it's not going to look like this, but a device where they really can have an influence on their neighborhood, maybe their county, maybe even their nation, in a way that they really know and really get, um, you know, David keeps explaining to me, using blockchain reduces the need of trust. Forget about trust. It's going to be based on technology and math, and I don't have to wonder, are they really counting my vote or not, right? So, so uh, Massimo and Abur, the, the fact that, you know, we have a couple of charts showing what the application is going to do, this all happened in David's head over the last 10 years. And I would say in the last three, four weeks, it started to kind of, I don't want to say coming from the clouds, but kind of coming from the universe of his brain, we're starting to put it down on, on some more uh, concrete maps. One. Two, David, would you please just say a few things about the fact that to use Nets app is going to be free of charge. You're not going to sign up for a service. We're not going to bombard the participants with advertisement. But you explained to me um, in, in some detail the fact that the token itself and the reserves of the token will generate a machine also to keep the whole ecosystem flowing. So in other words, we're not going to be trying to raise money for the next 10 years to keep this engine going, but NST itself will become the fuel. I'm talking about the fuel about economic, financial, to pay developers and so forth. That, that's correct. Uh... So this is part of uh, the mechanisms uh, of, of uh, the ICO. Uh, there are two uh, important um, charts. Uh, both are pie charts uh, that uh, are typically included in the fundamental document uh, uh, that is uh, uh, illustrating uh, uh, what is the ICO, which is called the white paper. And uh, the white paper... Um, is what you would call 20 years ago or even five years ago, the business plan. The huge difference between then and now is that 20 years ago, that would be so secret. Maybe you would want somebody to sign an NDA before showing it to them. And today the white paper tells every possible thing about the project in all detail to all the world. And if there is a section that is not deep enough, everybody will point at it, criticize it, and the team will run in order to release a new version that clarifies what has been missing. And this kind of radical openness is incredible, not only because it holds every accountable than, than it would be otherwise, but because it inspires dozens or hundreds or thousands of other people or teams to either merge with the original one and say, oh my God, I cannot believe it, I must be part of this. Or to say, huh, these guys had a good idea, but I think I can do better. And in terms of code, it's called forking. To fork the project, to, to, to split the project, and to say, I'm going to do this. And then, and then maybe, yeah, do it better, indeed. Um, now, the two pie charts that are included in this open document are... Uh, the token allocation and the use of funds. The use of funds is a, is a traditional uh, uh, way of describing what are you going to do with the, with the financial resources you have, whether you are going to pay developers, whether you are going to buy advertising on television, and many people would say that's uh, throwing money away, uh, or, or give yourself uh, huge bonuses uh, that you may or may not deserve. So what is the use of funds? Um, the, the, the first pie chart, the token allocation, uh, is uh, how the amount of cryptographic 
tokens is going to be divided between founders, advisors, um, uh, participants in the uh, token sale, and finally, and very importantly, back to the uh, question that Michelle asked, uh, kept in reserve. And that is the part of this uh, pie chart that if all the participants in the network do a good job, becomes for every practical purpose an evergreen fund. An evergreen fund is where you don't need to put in additional capital because the uh, what, what uh, value uh, the, the fund is able to generate can be recycled re in order to keep generating value. And, of course, uh, if you go and uh, stop uh, uh, the uh, world's uh, most important expert in, in uh, uh, token sales uh, and ICOs, and uh, he or she, most likely he, unfortunately, uh, uh, says, oh yeah, I have 10 years of experience in token sales, you can certainly laugh. Because nobody in the world has 10 years of experience in token sales, right? Any advantage I have, with respect, for example, of Michel, who, and he will not mind of me calling him out uh, in, in this, a latecomer. Or, 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 or somebody who, who just arrived in, in, in our group, right? The advantage that, that somebody like me, with respect of him, we have is very rapidly uh, eliminated by the things that both of us are learning that are new for both of us and the best practices that are evolving. And in six months, they are going to be completely different than not six months ago. And in our conversations, we will keep returning on this very importantly because the field is, is, is very rapidly shifting. But to go back to the allocation of financial resources, uh, our uh, first goal, Michelle and I, is to uh, be able to excite people who are ready to put in seed capital to... Um, ignite the project. And uh, this can come uh, from any source, but very likely it will come from people who know and trust us, who are excited about our vision, who may have already some experience with tokens and blockchain and token sales. Uh, and that seed money, you know, whether $100,000 or a million dollars, progressively, not necessarily all of it together, is going to be used to start implementing concrete uh, uh, features uh, of the app um, and to write uh, more um, uh, detailed documentation uh, because, and this is a third component of the white paper, we need to be very detailed about our roadmap. And then we will have to be able to deliver on our roadmap. Uh, the things that we promise must be kept because as we mint and distribute the tokens and as the tokens get on the exchanges, the value of the tokens will start to float and the floating value of the tokens will be very strongly correlated with our ability to deliver on this promise that we make to those who buy the tokens to start. There are also other components of speculators and, and whatever else that we cannot control. And we will just uh, bear the, the beating of maybe the token tanking for a few months and then bear the brunt of it and then just keep going. And then uh, we will see it uh, rise again, maybe. Uh, but uh, there will be fascinating mechanisms of macroeconomics and microeconomics that we will all learn about uh, there is a new word for it. It's called the tokenomics of how the token uh, influences uh, the uh, the um, uh, the projects and how the projects influence uh, the token in return. Uh, now, one thing that I want to tell you is that 
if you are available in terms of skills and time to invest in the Network Society Token project, you will be rewarded uh, with euros and dollars uh, in terms of what we are able to, to, to give you, but also generously with Network Society tokens that uh, you will be the proud owner of and that uh, you will be able to use on the app, but also to spend buying products and services in as much as it is going to be part of the global blockchain ecosystem, including Bitcoin and Ether and everything else. Um, two, tell us something as well. Or ask me something. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's great to um, hear you speak again. And um, uh, Michelle, is it? Yes. yes Michelle. Um, I'm inspired every time I hear um, this stuff, David. But in the last month or so, there's been a multi blockchain group set up online and they're starting to get active and think about things. And so listening to your description of... Uh, benefits from solar power in South Africa playing out in Norway or something like that, it's actually given me a new uh, insight into how this can really revolutionise the entire world here. And there's not only humanitarian issues and the distribution of resources across the globe that can benefit the entire globe, uh, but the thinking about how we're all interacting and so at the moment, we kind of set up a, in New Zealand, a uh, Māori Translators and Interpreters Association. And they're talking about how they're going to get funding for the next however many years from different groups and what have you. And straight away, I'm thinking now a fork. Straight away, I'm thinking now a fork. And it could even be on the Network Society token. So I'm just wondering, my question, I guess, would be, what's the easiest way I've got two questions. What's the easiest way to explain the difference between a uh, network society token and a loyalty scheme to an uh, uh, inquisitive layman like myself? And the second question would be, in terms of the white paper that you just are too premature to put that uh, within the moldy uh, Bitcoin uh, token cryptocurrency group that's just been started up for discussion with, with those people. Wonderful. And I am excited to hear about that. And welcome, Flavio, uh, joining us from Argentina. So um, to, to, to answer uh, uh, those two questions, um, the... I, I, I answer the second one first. Um, the anything that that uh, that I share with you, you are welcome to share with your group. Um, absolutely, no no problem. Uh, and part of uh, Michelle's uh, job is going to be to make sure that we are performing exceptionally well in be, be, being able to manage the onslaught of interest and always answering questions and never turning anybody away, never being too arrogant to listen to somebody enthusiastic who wants to provide us with some kind of feedback. That is going to be fundamental. And we are setting up the communications channels uh, to, to, to make sure that this, this can happen. And of course, your roles uh, as your role as ambassadors of Network Society is important in this as well. And I hope that you will be enthusiastic and proud to be able to contribute in that. Um, in, in terms of, of the first question, uh, there is a, a, a book being written now about the 50 different business models that uh, tokens can embody, right? So uh, I, I, I haven't seen it yet. I'm very eager to, to take a look. Uh, uh, except that I seldom pollute my own mind with preconceptions of models provided by somebody else. I like doing the reverse. Look at the value I want to provide, 
see how that value can be delivered and what are the mechanisms and then leave it to others to give it convenient labels and put it in their mental boxes. So does it appear to you that the Network Society token, as I describe it, is a loyalty token? Bless you. Great. Um, and, 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 and maybe it is. Uh, and maybe I will adopt the label, right? But I don't start from that. I don't start saying, oh, I want a loyalty token, and then I start designing something that satisfies that, 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 that label. Okay. Um, also, I think my approach allows us to more freely come up with features that might not fit the definition. Um, one of the tragical consequences of the obsessive paranoia that the Securities Exchange Commission is going through as we speak uh, is not only that we are going to hold the United States back uh, from potentially being on the avant-garde in exploring uh, the opportunities that tokens represent, but that they are impoverishing the understanding and the learning that so many people can gain uh, because they already stamped tokens and they said every token is a security. And from A to Z, we know what securities are. We are the lords of securities and the regulators that uh, forever, until the sun goes out, know what everything means. And that is uh, mind-blowingly misguided. Uh, it is tragic. Some, somebody could say it is, it is uh, suspiciously fundamentalist because uh, uh, it is so evident that it is not true uh, that that they cannot be so stupid to pretend that it is true. So if they are so uh, adamantly supporting false notions, there must be some kind of reason and 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 uh, an interest and potentially an economic reason that drives that, i.e., maintaining the status quo. Now. Um, uh, Smartly navigating the regulatory minefield uh, is uh, pretty important. Uh, and there are already consequences. Many token sale projects exclude Chinese citizens, United States citizens, and too bad, too bad for the Chinese and the US. And the projects can still thrive. There are 7 billion plus people in the world and approximately 6 billion and 900 million and more have not even heard of all of this that we are so excited about. There's so much that we have to do that just evangelizing about it, talking about it, is really going to be absorbing a lot of our time. And some of us have fun doing it, like me. Others don't, and that's perfect. Uh, but uh, but it is really important because um, I, I, I think, and I'm not alone, that this is not a fad. Blockchain technologies are here to say uh, they do improve the, the transparency, the accountability, the speed of evolution towards sustainable business models. Uh, they are more inclusive. Uh, they uh, are financially sound. Uh, and, and they are... Uh, improving day by day in their performance and their features and, and uh, they are really very, very exciting. Thank yes, Michelle, go ahead. Okay, uh, I, I just wanted to add a couple of things to the questions that were asked and, and uh, the answers or, or views that David offered. Um, I had a very lengthy phone call last night with a colleague of mine in Singapore. And just now when David says, you know, there are parts of the world that will be excluded for some or part of this new technology revolution. Uh, excluded maybe in part or maybe temporarily, who knows. But the fact that it is decentralized, that it is super exciting, people that will want 
to get involved in this. If you're sitting in Beijing or in Washington, D.C. or whatever, and you want to get involved in this, nobody will be able to stop you. That's for sure. But, but uh, two, the, the questions that you asked a minute ago, how is this different from a uh, United Mileage Plus uh, uh, point system, right? And you know what? I love that. When uh, this friend of mine, uh, Boon Watt, last night, he asked me the same thing. So this NSD token thing, right? And so he's a, he comes from business intelligence, uh, analytics. Uh, he's in cybersecurity. He's an enterprise software guy. And he you know, has been in this business for many, many years. And the more I talk about him, the more he gets excited. And then he comes back. But so tell me again. So what is this NSD? What, what is it? What can I do with it? And I said, well, I have United Airline points and I cannot change them into dollars, not today at least, but I can buy a drink on the airline with it or I can upgrade my seat or I can buy an airline ticket for my son. So in that sense, yes, these points are not dollars or euros or whatever, but have a real value. And, and so they said, okay, I start to get it. And then, and then he says, well, what else can you do? And I said, well, this is all developing right now, but how about getting a, a, uh, a customized health plan for you, for you personally? He's a very athletic guy and everything, nutritionist. Okay, how about you can use NST to plug into one of our partner companies? And with that, you get a, okay, so these are kind of like the monetizing part of the of the idea. Uh, when David earlier was saying, remember, this is going to be a decentralized app. Yes, said that to me several times, but once in a while you hear something for the third time, say, ah, now I just saw another answer to my questions. Um, so when Massimo says, how can I contribute, right? How can I contribute or how can I we are designing not just Nets app, the application, but really the, the ecosystem. And, and when, when David came up with, with the, the vision of saying, hey, one immediate way we dramatically increase the value of the token is people using this free app, they were NSTs, but also they will have access to dozens of other services for free, right? Going through that bridge, maybe using NSTs or maybe with, you know, with, with other means. So one of, the, one of the things, one of the exciting things in this project for me is that there's the technology part. I used to be an engineer a long, long time ago. I went to school in Switzerland and was an electrical engineer, but you know, I, we, we, still used, uh, uh, we still used slide rules. We were past the abacus. We didn't use abacus anymore, but we used slide rules before calculators. So you can see how old I am. Anyway, but so I love the engineering part. The fact that we can have designers and, and, and futuristic kind of guys in Rome or in Auckland, New Zealand, on, or in uh, this gentleman who just joined, I think from Argentina, uh, that's super exciting, right? In terms of developing the idea and the technology, as well as the coding, right? As we get a CTO on board and develop a real development uh, project, I need to keep reminding myself because I'm the newbie in this technology. This is very, very different than what I used to do. Yes, there is product plans, deliverables, da da dim, bada boom but they can change from day to day, either change direction or move very quickly. In my business, you know, you have, you do quarterly reviews, you do reviews and product reviews, uh, revenue, profits, blah, 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 all this stuff. Here, it's gonna be fluid, right? It's, it's on the go all the time. And so the fact that this, technology or, or let's say one of the main services which is going to be this app is a distributed application so well if people might be individuals or david might decide oh no we're going to hire a development team in on mars or wherever he's going to find them and they will work on a 
specific thing, but that doesn't mean that this group of 10 people in, in Ukraine or whatever are going to be the only developers of the product or the service, right? So to me, um, I know I'm rambling here, but it's super exciting because it is new technology and nobody can, nobody who wants to get involved, no matter what the government, even David, even David will get to the point where he say, oh shit, there are all kind of people getting involved in this right now and and some of these things will take a life on their own, right? And and you won't be able to just say, oh, no, 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 we're not going to do this, we're not going to do that. Wonderful. Thank you for those remarks. Uh, uh, and uh, in, uh, Flavio uh, arrived a little bit late uh, in the call, and I chatted with him asking whether he had a question, and his question is, uh, uh, whether uh, it is going to be possible to integrate uh, the Network Society token and the Nets app with his own uh, and how they could enhance each other. So, um, you know, as a question of principle, the answer is yes. What uh, does Flavio do? What is his token? Uh, so, uh, Flavio, would you like to describe uh, Pixivus uh, in, uh, in your own words? Uh, I, you are muted, and uh, I cannot unmute you here. Uh, maybe you don't have a, a connection that enables you. Uh, so, so Michelle, uh, we can look it up, uh, and uh, and then and then we can learn about it. Uh, but to answer Flavio's question, it uh, uh, it is it is certainly possible. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, without uh, uh, substituting myself for, for Flavio, Pixibus uh, enables um, cities uh, and uh, uh, contractors to document uh, certain um, uh, bidding processes or construction processes uh, uh, to be documented properly on the blockchain uh, with uh, photos and documents that are geotagged and that are represented in a map so that everybody can uh, accountably and responsibly and transparently follow what is going on. So it is a smart way to make uh, a city work better. Uh, and as such, I would say that it is perfectly aligned uh, with, uh, with what... Uh, we are we are planning to do with the Nets app in terms of of having people build communities that are resilient and and uh, sustainable and and smart and future oriented. Um, it, we are getting uh, close uh, to the hour that we scheduled for uh, this first uh, conversation, and I want to thank uh, everybody, uh, Tetu Matakuru, uh, Massimo. Flavio, Michelle, uh, uh, and, and, and you know, isn't this cool? We had like four continents already here together without boundaries, sharing ideas, sharing the excitement of this, this project. And this is going to be like this week after week, month after month as we grow and, and uh, uh, to, to, to get back to what Tu said, I invite you all to uh, spread the one pager that we will periodically update and then there will be new versions, uh, obviously. And then the white paper, once it is drafted and it will be available and updated as well. Uh, and um, please confirm your availability to provide your skills for the project, whether it is uh, you know, uh, establishing relationships with the Maori community, whether it is uh, designing the user interface of the mobile app for Massimo, maybe, whether it is something else for Flavio. And, uh, and uh, Michelle is going to coordinate your efforts and channel them in an effective manner for tangible outputs uh, that we will initially see as mock-ups and then soon we will be able to start playing with. 
that that's fantastic you you you've been stealing the words from my mouth i'm excited and i was suggesting to do something like that so we would be able to have something to show and to touch and that's the one of the, the most useful thing we could do to spread the word so we can show it even if it's just a simulation or you know a mock-up exactly so that, that's exactly uh, so yeah. so uh, we are using Asana for task management. Uh, we are using Slack for uh, uh, chatting uh, on uh, well-structured um, channels. Uh, we will be using uh, Invision app uh, for mock-ups. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, we are already using uh, Google Docs uh, for sharing and collaborating on files and spreadsheets, etc. So with your permission, uh, I will... Uh, add you to these various tools so that you can start interacting with the rest of the team. And, and on Telegram. Uh, we also have a Telegram channel. It is a public channel uh, and it will serve as uh, interaction with uh, people who are not necessarily uh, uh, working in the project but are interested uh, uh, about the project. Uh, and we will have, uh, and we already have YouTube and and Twitter and Facebook and, and many other things, of course. Plenty of uh, ways of uh, communicating. Um, and, uh, and so uh, thanks uh, again. And uh, uh, next week uh, I will set up uh, the call uh, in a time that is uh, more compatible with uh, West Coast US or, or uh, maybe Asia. Uh, and... Uh, even though we had, uh, obviously, incredible participation from New Zealand and Argentina. So uh, all of you are very, very welcome. New Zealand had to get up the first this morning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> seven o'clock here. Oh. Yeah, right. <laughs> seven o'clock here this morning. Uh, mm -hmm. But no, it's great. Thank you, David. And thank you, everyone. I'm very excited, as always. Very good. Thank you, everybody. And bye-bye. And, and Talk to you all soon.